Aftermarket gauges. Not only do they look pretty good, but they actually serve a pretty big purpose in stopping your four-wheel drive's engine from blowing up. You don't want it to blow up, do you? Well, you better stick around as we install a set of these on today's video. Let's go back to Alex from the past in the workshop and find out how we do it. Well, first of all, I think we have to talk about how we're gonna mount the gauges. And this is what I've chosen. It is a pillar pod mount. This one is by SAS or SARS, because it's spelled S-A-A-S, but that's too much like that flu that was going around years ago. So we're calling it SAS. Um, in my old patrol, I had a, a pillar pod thing like this. Uh, it was an unbranded one that I got off eBay. And to be honest, I liked that one more. Sorry, SAS. Um, the cups sort of just sit on the top there, but that is vehicle specific. They uh, do them vehicle specific for all sorts of cars and this should just clip straight over on the driver's side. So I'll just be cruising along like this, and this will be over here, and I'll be like, yeah, we boosting. It doesn't come gray like that. It actually comes black like it is on the back. In the instructions, it tells you that you should color match it because um, that black color will fade in the sun. Um, I just went for a uniform generic vinyl and plastic spray in a gray. So. It kind of matches the interior of the GU a little bit closer than black would anyway. So initially I was going to go boost and EGT here. And up on the screen now are the two that I was considering. Now you can see the boost gauge there, that's a SAS diesel boost gauge. So it starts at zero, goes up to 30. And you want to buy a diesel boost gauge if you're doing it because uh, petrol vehicles, they'll have boost and vacuum. Well, diesels don't produce a vacuum on the intake they need a separate vacuum pump to do that, so it's no use to you. The exhaust gas gauge that I was looking at was the matching SAS one, but as you can see, it starts at 300 degrees and goes upwards from there. Well, you're gonna be at highway cruising speed before you even see that gauge move, and up at that upper limit there, if your engine's reaching those temperatures, it is cooked. So here is what I got recommended. This is the SAS Trax gauge, and as you can see, you've got uh, boost dial around here and down here in this digital section is the exhaust gas temperature and that will start from zero degrees and go well it's triple digits so I would assume it goes up to 999 degrees. Of course this completely blew my plans out of whack because I've got a twin pod pillar mount and now both of the gauges I was planning to put in it now only take up one pod so I had to make up my mind and uh, get another gauge. It's a matching SAS gauge. Around the outside we've got oil pressure and down here we've got a digital water temperature readout. I wasn't so concerned really about the oil pressure, um, but the water temperature will be handy. We're not covering anything about that second gauge for this video. We're sticking to the boost and EGT. Now to be able to get those readings for exhaust gas temperature and boost, we're gonna need some sensors installed in the right places. We'll start with the boost sensor. Uh, this SAS gauge is a stepper motor type, so you install a, a sender and then it sends the signal electronically. Now, I believe the best place to install a boost sender is on the engine side of the intercooler. Some people might disagree. Ignore them, they're wrong. <laughs> the reason I think this is because you go turbo, it goes through the intercooler and back through, it inevitably loses a bit of boost. So, putting it as close to the engine as possible, you're getting a dead accurate reading of how much boost is going into the engine. This one actually already had a boost gauge on it before. So we'll have a look at where that's installed and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, coming across from the battery, you can see the turbo down there. That comes up this pipe, through the intercooler, back around, and right here is where it's been tapped into before. This line coming out is for a doors and needle valve, which is uh, an aftermarket fitment thing to stop ZD30s blowing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that line and the boost gauge comes with a T-piece. So I can cut it, join it back together with an extra bit coming off the side for the new boost gauge. This is a small length of clear hose they give you with the boost gauge. Nice tight fit. I'm not gonna cut that to length because I'm not sure 
how long this cable is and if it will be enough. I'd rather not extend it. So we'll run this over here and put the sensor up against the firewall. So there we go. We've got our sender there with the wire ready to go into the cab. And I'm going to cable tie all that up and use a bit of conduit stuff to protect the cable. Over here, we've also got the old boost line from the last boost gauge. So I can wrap those around there with a bit of tape and I can use the old boost line to pull it all through the firewall. But we don't want to pull them through the firewall separate. So we may as well uh, get the EGT gauge sorted so we can run the wires all through at the same time. So this here is the probe for the EGT side of the gauge and you need to be able to get this somewhere in the exhaust. They do mention that you can fit it in the manifold, but it's definitely more popular to put them in the dump pipe just after the turbo. So if you have an aftermarket exhaust, you may be lucky enough to already have a bung welded into the top of the dump pipe to be able to take an EGT gauge. The problem you may encounter is mismatched threads. So down there, you'll have a bung, have a hex head on it, just like a bolt, and you undo it. You might be lucky enough to just be able to put your EGT gauge in, but it could have the wrong thread. You can actually buy adapters for that. If you don't have one in your dump pipe already, um, you're gonna have to go to an exhaust shop unless you're good with the welder. I'm not good with the welder, but I managed to tackle it myself instead. It's worth considering at this point, if you're thinking about getting an aftermarket exhaust, maybe buy your EGT gauge first and check the thread type. Then you can tell the exhaust shop what sort of bung to weld in. It'll save you a lot of problems. There's the probe in the exhaust. We bring the camera out. You've got the wire there. And we can take this wire and run it along there with the boost gauge. Okay, I've got my conduit there and both of the sensor cables ready to go. Like I said, I'm quite lucky because you see that there? That is the old boost line from the old boost gauge. So all I have to do is take my roll of tape and tape these two together. Reach up under the dash, pull on that and pull the whole lot through. If you're not lucky enough to have something to pull it through with, you're going to have to poke through that grommet uh, using a whatever you can find really. I use a piece of steel rod with an ARB airlocker line um, hot glued onto the other end of it. You really need a little bit of something firm that can punch you through, through that, and then you need something nice and flexible. So even a, a little piece of airline would do it. You get that initial puncture, and then you tape your cable onto the other end here and you can pull it through. Oh yeah, you might need a little bit of lubricant as well. So some silicon spray or whatever works. Now look, let's not pretend this bit's gonna be easy. You have to get those cables up here. Um, you're also gonna to have to get one back down underneath to be able to pick up for when your ignition's on and for when you switch your lights on and that sort of thing. So the best I can recommend is, again, a little piece of airline, something that's uh, relatively firm but still has enough flex in it. And move the dash mat across and there's a little gap down here. I'm lucky because that there is, again, that's the feed from the old boost gauge. So it's all still connected underneath. I can just pull that up and up come my plug connections. What will probably help you is if you remove this A-pillar trim here. It gives you a little bit more space to work with. It was getting a bit dark, so I moved outside where there's some more light. Let's dig around under the dash and find out where we can hook these um, power feeds for the gauges up. Now, it looks like a dog's breakfast, I know, but uh, let's start by probing this one here. This has got a bit of tape around it. Let's see if we can find a constant power. Oh, there it is. Lucky first. So this one here, I'm just gonna unwrap and tap my constant power for my gauges into that. So for the SAS gauges, white is constant power. I just strip that 
twist it around our constant power wire, which is the big thick white with a red trace if you're doing this on a Nissan Patrol. Add a touch of solder, so as you get a good connection. So that's the constant power out of the way. Now we need ignition power. That's easy. Got the test light here. All you'll do, stick the key in the ignition, turn it to on, and probe the wires until your light comes on. That's not a surefire way to tell though until you turn the key off. So hold it there, turn the key, and if the light goes off when your key does, you've found the right one. Same for the illumination one. Um, turn your park lights on, probe around until your test light comes on, turn your lights off, and it should turn off, you've found the right one. As for the earth, where I have this attached to, just up under the fuse box here on that bit of metal, earth it anywhere to that piece of metal. You don't need to see all that, of course, so here's a quick time lapse, and if you're doing it on a patrol, here's the wiring colours over the top of that. So, there's all of our wires up. Now, the two black ones here are the ones that we're using for the boost and exhaust temperature gauge. There's two white ones there, that's for the water temperature and oil pressure. Uh, not covering that in this video. And then there's the big white one over here, and that is the gauge power supply. So with all of those wires up there, we can put this original trim back because uh, our gauge trim doesn't replace this, it just goes over the top. There we go. We've got four down the bottom because there's power in and then there's the daisy chain power out to go to the top. And then we've got the two black plugs, which are for the gauge feeds. It comes up just through these holes in the back. Let's get that um, pillar pod fastened in place. All I've got to do now is to plug in all the gauges and slot them in. But here's the bloody annoying part. SAS have put the setup button on the back of the gauge. So varying presses of this button allow you to turn warning beeps on and off, allow you to set warnings for high um, EGT and boost levels, um, and to change the backlight color of the gauge, all on the back of it. So whenever you want to change some settings, you're going to have to pop your gauges out. It's a little bit annoying, but that's the way it is. Okay, here you go, ready? Ignition on. Okay, let's give these gauges a go, hey? Uh, before we set off though, make sure that if you've enjoyed watching this video, you have tapped that subscribe button and given it a like. Also, if we've really helped you out, consider uh, joining up for Patreon, patreon.com slash intense offroad. Got a really good little community going on over there. I post some behind the scenes footage. Got a Facebook group you can join. So, uh, patreon.com slash intense off road. Give it a look. With these gauges, I'm gonna go for a spin up the hill uh, so we can put a lot of boost on it and a lot of exhaust temperature. We'll see how they perform and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. We're at 70 k's an hour and we're just about to hit the hill. So my initial thoughts about it is um, that EGT there is quite responsive. Going up the hill, accelerating from 70 to 80 k's an hour. That is foot flat to the floor. Not even near 500 yet. Now this patrol actually has the Nissan anti-detonation kit on it, which is supposed to stop it from boosting too high, but I've actually managed to make it boost too high. See the beep? I've got the gauge set to uh, do a warning beep at 22 psi. It should not go over 18 psi, but if I back off, and then I get back on it, 
I can push it up over 20. So that's a bit of a worry. Yeah, so there you go. That's the finished product. The top gauge doesn't do anything yet. Still got to hook that up for water temperature and oil pressure. But that bottom gauge there is nice.